Hey, what's up, Street Talks? There, coming from there, from Street Photography Blog. So, I just wanted to give you some. I've been testing the Fujifilm GFX 50R and the 45 millimeter f2 point lens for a while, and I just want to give some practical thoughts on the benefits and upsides and downsides of shooting digital medium format. So, the first question is: Is digital medium format worth the hype? I think, long story short, yes. It's probably the most interesting thing that's happening in photography because, you know, at this point. Uh, full frame and APS-C sensors more or less kind of start to look the same. There's not actually a big uh, difference there. And also we're at the point where smartphone technology is getting pretty damn good with the computational photography, especially, especially like cameras on the Google Pixel 3. Pretty astounding. So at this point, it's like how do photographers differentiate their images or their approach or their gear? And I think really the answer is digital medium format. Now this is not to say that you cannot make good photos if you don't shoot with the digital medium format camera. I'm just trying to share my personal honest thoughts. So the thing that the, the reason why the GFX 50R is such a game changer is that it's only about 750 grams. And I just did a, a weight comparison test, like totally unscientific, holding this in my film, like a MP in my hands and shaking it. They feel like about the same size. So even though camera physically looks quite big, it's extremely lightweight, so it's a camera that you could carry with you everywhere you go. And generally, I found that the benefits of shooting with uh, digital medium format, or even the GFX 50R, is that when you're shooting with digital medium format, you start to see things a little bit differently and you start to approach things differently because it captures so much detail and dynamic rain and resolution. You end up just photographing more of just like the simple random things around you. like it's a different way for you to see the world. So like, for example, even photographing a light bulb or some grass or some texture on the wall. Once you shoot it and you put it on your computer, it's like, it's, it's really, it's really shocking. It's like, whoa, these photos look freaking epic. And they could be like, not like quote, quote, good photos. It's just photos of whatever. So actually the funny thing with digital medium format cameras, it actually makes you appreciate just the beauty and the mundane of everyday life. And it forces you to pay attention to more things. And it's just kind of fun too, because you're like, honestly, at this point with this kind of camera, you can make an interesting looking photo of anything, pretty much. Now, some people might be like, oh, well that's cheating because you just have an expensive camera. To me, that's kind of a nonsensical statement because we shouldn't think of photography as like some sort of competition, like, oh, you shoot better photos than me, I shoot better photos than you, I have more followers, blah, blah, blah. Honestly, the more I start to think about philosophically photography, it's really about making photos that we shoot for ourselves for our own private enjoyment. And if you want to share your photos, it's because you first enjoy the photos for yourself. So if I like to go out and shoot flowers on a digital medium format camera, look at them on my laptop and like, wow, these photos make me so happy and I'm so grateful to be alive and you know, there's so much beauty and joy. Then I think it actually makes uh, photography more honest. It makes it more authentic and it makes it more enjoyable because once again, you're not just out trying to make nice photos for you to upload to Instagram or social media, or whatever, to get a bunch of likes. It's really, you're trying to shoot photos to appreciate the world around you, your loved ones, and um, essentially to create artwork with your camera as your tool and to enjoy these photos for yourself. Now, some of the other benefits of shooting with a digital medium format, especially if you shoot raw, the amount of detail is incredible. Like if you're photographing textures, I was at the beach the other day photographing some sand, you're really able to crank out so much more details. And the benefit of this is that if like, for example, if you're shooting black and white photography, there's just so much more dynamic range between the brights and lights and the photos just kind of look more silky. They have a, a nicer aesthetic. And also for color, the colors that come out of this process, JPEG or raw files, you could just draw so much more color from whatever you're photographing. So it's interesting at this point, I wouldn't even call it image quality, but maybe like image fidelity is that the information in these raw files, it just captures a wider gamut of colors, of textures, of light, of sharpness. And the photos, they just kind of look different. They look more three dimensional, perhaps something to do with the, the sensor size as well as the, the, the focal length and I don't, I don't, I don't really know the physics behind it, but I could certainly say when I look at a digital medium format camera photo, like aesthetically, just, I really like looking at the pictures for myself. And there are also obviously some downsides of shooting digital medium format cameras. So for example, 
I've been shooting for fun. Just kind of like, you could even just palm this and just shoot selfies yourself. And I've been shooting pictures of Cindy and myself. Man, I was like taking selfies of myself on the Fujifilm GFX 50R. And the photos are almost too sharp and too detailed. I can see like all the fucking wrinkles in my face, all the imperfections, all the places where I should, probably should have shaved more. So this is kind of the strange thing is that if you're photographing people on digital medium format, unless the person has like crazy amounts of makeup as a model, whatever, it actually, <laughs> it actually makes people look a little, it makes people look uglier. And I think this is the reason why Blu-ray hasn't taken off really in porn because you could see all the, you know, plastic surgery or the breast augmentation or just like when you look down there, it just, it just doesn't look savory. <laughs> Perhaps not the best word to use, but essentially it just kind of looks gross. And even for myself, whenever I watch cinema, I prefer to watch lower quality image quality. Like whenever I watch a film on Blu-ray, Samsung TV, aesthetically, it's just too sharp. It's too perfect. I, it, it just, to me, it actually looks a little bit ugly. And um, also another downside of digital medium format cameras is that if you're shooting raw, like for example, I have a 13 inch MacBook Pro maxed out specs, even Lightroom, newest version, whatever, it takes forever for the images to load. And so it will significantly slow down your processing and will significantly slow down your image editing selection process. Now, obviously other things too, when you ex let, let's say you know you want to store all your raw files you're going to need terabytes on terabytes on terabytes problem or even when you export the images as jpeg the files are so big they just take longer to upload and to back up so there are certainly lots of downsides which come with um you know having bigger file sizes and image quality and unfortunately at least here in america our internet speeds haven't really caught up to the extent of more megapixels in these crazy cameras so that's kind of a big issue. Fortunately, storage is pretty cheap, assuming you're using a, a non-solid state drive. Solid state drives are still kind of expensive. My practical recommendation is if you're shooting with one of these, don't store your a library raw files. Like look, you know, let's say you're out shooting for a day, look at your pictures, flag the ones you like, post-process them, export them as JPEG, save them to Dropbox or Google Drive or your your hard drive, and then just delete all the raw files because Otherwise, you're going to have to, you're going to have a headache just trying to back up all these images. And so the question is to, I think the reason why a lot of people are drawn to better image quality in cameras is because we kind of want, we don't want our, art, our artistic potential being held back by our equipment. And so sometimes like, you know, for example, have you ever seen something and you wanted to photograph it because you like with your two eyes, you saw it and you're like, wow, that's so beautiful. And then you take a photo of it on your phone or something and you look at the photo and you're like, huh, this photo isn't as beautiful as I imagined in my eyes. When you shoot it with one of these things, it looks as beautiful as you saw it. Now, once again, this is more of a philosophical question is that aesthetically the photograph looks very beautiful, right? But it still might not be an interesting photograph. So for example, I could shoot a water bottle in some nice light on a digital medium format camera. You look at the image quality of the water bottle, and it's like, wow, that's the most beautiful picture of a water bottle I, I've, I've seen. So the aesthetics are really beautiful. But in terms of the content, it's just a water bottle at the end of the day. So you might share it to somebody else and they're like, what, what's the big deal? It's just a water bottle. <laughs> and also the truth is most people are just looking at photos on their phones, which is what like a tiny, like you're looking at your photos on like a four to five inch device just a tiny little rectangle, especially if you just share them on Instagram. So you're not really going to be able to tell a difference. The only t time you could really tell a difference with digital medium format, in my opinion, is if you look at your own photos on yourself, on your own laptop, full screen, if you're sharing your own pictures online, the difference between digital medium format or not on the internet, you can't really tell it as much. So I think the million dollar question is, should I buy it? I cannot make this decision for you. I would just recommend if you're really, really interested in it and you could afford it in cash, you go afford to buy two of them. Just um, just buy on Amazon or B&H or whatever. Test it out if you don't like it, you could just return it. But uh, some practical things, super lightweight. Um, I think for now, in terms of the value, the price is right. It's a good time to pull the trigger. And also um, the GFX 50R is the next iteration of the GFX 
50S, which is the predecessor. So I think Fujifilm's probably got most of the bugs out. So at this point, it seems like a good time to just kind of pull, uh, to kind of pull the trigger. Now the question is, will this make me a better photographer or will this inspire me more to shoot photos? And I don't, I don't really think so. The aesthetics of the photos will look nicer, but I don't know if I actually give you more inspiration to go out and shoot more. That's that's more of a psychological, philosophical thing. Is you have to want to have things to photograph. But anyways, I recommend you to test it out. And regardless of what kind of equipment or gear you have, just kind of realize, make photos that please yourself. Try to strive to make photos that you consider beautiful. And I mean, if you really just want a new digital camera because you're you don't like to shoot on your phone or something, I would just generally recommend the $500 Ricoh GR version two. Fits in your front pocket, phenomenal image quality. And if you're thinking about getting one of these things for street photography or everyday photography, I would, I would recommend it. I think it's good. Um, so what are your personal thoughts about digital medium format camera? Why things overhyped? Why things underhyped? Leave a comment down below and love to hear your thoughts. Thanks a lot for watching guys. Peace out.